So in comes Philippine Game Developers Expo 2024, and to our present surprise, Sega has given us a closed door session for their upcoming game, Metaphor Re Fantasio. We played 3 15 minute slices of different aspects of the game. No, obviously, this doesn't represent the whole experience. On the other hand, they let me dive in straight into what the game will be like. Given my experience with Atlas RPGs, I can string together a good guess of what they have planned for Metaphor Re Fantasio. So, without further ado, let's break it down. The first section appears to be where the game starts. You are introduced to the protagonist and the not so annoying fairy sidekick. We soon find ourselves in what looks like your run of the mill world where spells are flung and swords are swung. One particular thing you'll take notice of is how nobody calls themselves humans. In fact, they seem to be the big threat to the world we will be playing in. The introduction runs us through a castle and introduces us to how some of the systems are run. It's difficult to say anything about the story at this point. There's only so much I can get out of the 15 minute slices after all. Though on the presentation of the game are the stylistic choices you'd recognize from the very man who was responsible for the last three Persona games. The visual style of Metaphor is somewhere between new, familiar, and unique. The anime flavor is still there and I'm glad it never left, though the style is something closer to Death Note or JoJo's Bizarre Adventure if any of those titles ring a bell to you. There's some roughness and grunge to the textures that extends all the way out to the menus, the on-screen prompts, and even portrait art of each character. It all feels like the natural maturity of the developers within Atlas, where you can tell how each element feels purposeful and informs the viewer easily while looking fantastic. The way they're laid out, the way they animate, it's not as flashy as the Persona series, but they do the job well. Since I already told you that the minds behind Personas 3, 4, and 5 are the ones behind Metaphor, you'd already expect that this would be the standard turn-based combat, with the flashy menu-style combat along with the great camera work to keep the contextual information in front of you all the time. Even the elemental system that most newcomers will be heavily confused by, it's also there, so you got all that. What's different then? First of all, there's now two modes of combat, as opposed to the dungeon area mostly being just the place to start encounters. There's a new dimension to it now. I know that adding a role function would just make it look like they're saying, oh yeah, we are souls-like now, but let me give you better context. There are now two types of battles that would be solo and squad. Solo mode lets you roam around as your lead character in the dungeon, and you can initiate combat by stunning enemies on the field before entering the traditional turn-based squad combat. It's no longer as straightforward as before though, weak enemies quickly get taken out on the field while stronger enemies require more hits, where you can get hit and lose initiative in return. A single turn for this kind of title can seriously affect how easy or difficult an encounter can be with this game, so you really want to consider those risks. When it comes to squad-based combat, I'd like to stress that rather than the Persona system, Metaphor is basing their battle system off Shin Megami Tensei 3 where the former has characters take on a predetermined permanent archetype for fights, also where their abilities are further enhanced with social links. SMT3 system allows for more flexibility for party formations through customization. If you want three warriors for example, or maybe all mages for your party, you can do that. This also affects the synthesis ability that are available to your party, and these are stronger skills that take more resource like MP and the turns of those involved with a chosen ability. And around here is where I finally got to the boss of the first section, and it's exactly here where that first section ends. And on to the second part, which is pretty much an introduction to how the dungeon crawl will be like. Skipping what I've already gone over the first part, you are introduced to what clearly looks like a future party member and a side quest she presents for us. Things of note that I see here are the minimap at the bottom that helps us get our bearings as we go through the dungeon, and the pace you can dynamically play the game at. The fact that you can just one-shot weaker enemies on the field well, while ones at your level or higher will inevitably be fought through our well-known turn-based system. One thing I particularly noticed is how the game will let you play at a much faster pace if you wish. You can skip so much animation time, or maybe speed them up if you want. The menus aren't plagued with confirmation prompts, and there's even a run function on the field, in case you just want to run past other enemies that might spot you. It's pretty clear that there will be some level of grinding involved in Metaphor Re Fantasio, so these quality of life improvements are more than welcome for me. The 3D maps or dungeons 
are a bit more complicated than usual. Having multiple floors accessible without having to go through a loading screen or a ladder. This is also the first Atlas RPG I've played where the camera has a lot more freedom of movement, which may mean that there's a lot more hidden stuff that you might want to spot around the dungeon, whether that be foes waiting in ambush, items waiting to be picked up, or routes you're trying to find. Admittedly, I find scouring the dungeon a bit more challenging than I expected, not only because it's much easier to get ambushed from blind spots, but also because the dungeon is rendered in a way that makes it hard to see objects in the distance. It's not as easy to map out mentally, but maybe this will come to change in other parts of the game. All I really did here was explore the dungeon to see what I would find and how they designed it, see how rewarding exploration can be, and what sort of encounters they have planned. I was a bit surprised to see that they're putting a lot more effort into making that active combat on the field more attractive rather than making every encounter a turn based fight. It does mix it up quite a bit and I hope that they explore this concept healthily because I'm sure fans would want it to be still focused on the squad type combat that they are very used to and enjoy. One major change I realized was the player character getting KO'd doesn't equate to a game over which I'm sure was a point of contention for at least some of the fans out there. Thanks to me. Fumbling my boss encounter with the Minotaur, I wasn't able to finish this section in time, but I did see something very familiar on the unit next to me, the ability to forge relationships with other characters in-game, and this became more evident in the third slice I played through. They did state that the third part would be a boss encounter, and yes, it did have that, but you start out at some sort of hub, which turns out to be the travel vehicle you'll be using for the game. It's here that I noticed that you can do your daily life and social aspects that are quite the familiar thing if you know Persona. In here, I can do things like maybe rest or read a book or even cook a kebab with somebody else. And it's at this point I realized that the game probably has social stats and with one plus of a button, there they are. Exploring what's inside the pause menu, I found that I can also use other characters as there were more than four available. Switching seems easy enough and then I noticed that there is some sort of skill tree. I opened that menu and I was completely shocked to see what would be the basis of creating any sort of party formation I wanted. Making a custom party means having a job system that makes that required flexibility possible. And in this title, it's called the Archetypes. Characters can freely switch their archetype at any time and even hybrid the abilities they get with previously learned ones. This quick description is already letting my imagination run wild, especially when you consider that more role variants will be unlocked as you play the game. From here, I tried switching some archetypes around, but I realized that I need a lot more time to figure out what I actually want to run with, so I just put them back to the default types and went on trying to do what I can to find the boss fight. Again, it wasn't so obvious for me what to do, and the 15 minute time limit was definitely playing a part in my head trying to rush to what I could find. I did get to the boss battle eventually, and it felt like a rudimentary encounter. Figuring out how to weaken it, figuring out its best approach, while trying to survive whatever it chucks at you. Unfortunately, I wasn't fast enough to finish the fight either, where putting some of my precious time into cooking may have been a factor. Still, once you figure out your approach, it shouldn't take too long to finish off the boss. And there you have it, the setting, the system, and the amazing style of the game are pretty much enough to get me on board. When you review the people leading the production of Metaphor, the impressive work in front of us is actually hardly a surprise. I mean, check out the battle theme. I never knew that hearing some sort of sutra chanting mixed with your usual battle orchestra would hit this hard. How does he know? Shoji Meguro, what, what came across your mind to think that you could mix these two things and you cook like so absolutely amazingly? And now it's like an earworm. No matter how many RPGs they've made in the past, they always seem to have new ideas to bring up in front of us and I'm just pleasantly surprised to see them. Now I'm looking forward to this game, October can't come any sooner. Anyway, that's it. That's my babbling about Metaphor Refantasio. I'm excited for this game. It's gonna be on Xbox, on PlayStation, and PC if you guys are looking forward to it too. And October 11th is our faded day. For those that made it this far, thank you so much for checking out this video or even just listening to it. I appreciate that a lot. If you like this video and want me to make more, just click that like button. If you want to see more of our work, you can just subscribe to the YouTube channel. Of course, there's the social medias. That's going to be the Instagram and the Twitter. Maybe there's a TikTok. And finally, for everything else we have, that's going to be RaymanRufiles.com. That's going to be it. Till next time, be seeing you.